But yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk some NFL uh, headlines, dude. Baker Mayfield, number one. So happy for him. Story of the year. Baker Mayfield. First round pick. He's been on, he's, was, he was on the Ryan Fitzpatrick train where he was going to just jump around from team to team to team to team, play 15 years in the league, and then tip the cap as he leaves. Just a true locker room guy that everybody loves. Signs a three-year, $100 million deal with Tampa. And this is, right, this is less than a week after they signed... Um, Who's old? Oh, uh, yeah, Mike Evans. Yeah, Mike Evans back. To another insane bag. Mike just is sitting in Florida, yeah. no state income tax, and just raking in money over yeah. and over and over again. But it's unbelievable, man. That's unreal. Uh, yeah, I'm happy for Big Man. It, like you were saying, like once he, he left the Browns, was kind of like bouncing around, trying to find a home, played well, like when he got to the Rams with McVay, and he's just stayed steady. He's just kept fucking grinding, man. And now it's paying off. He got a... Uh, $100 million deal, 50 guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Golly. That's got to feel so good because there's got, there had to be so many times where Baker's sitting there doubting himself, being like, maybe I, maybe I should have gone about stuff different. Maybe I should have just kind of and you're coming conformed in, to the attitude that people really yeah. wanted me to have. And you're coming into uh, to be the successor of Tom, of Tom Brady. Yeah. Like, no one gave you a shot at the beginning of the year. No. And they were a dangerous team all, all season. Gritty team all season. Gritty. He was, gritty coming off, he was on a one-year, $4 million deal. Right. Past season. No, because no, literally nobody was counting them in it. Then they were getting a little sneaky throughout the first start of the year. Had a little had a little lull in the middle. But, yeah, bro. And the team seemed to rally around him big time, which I'm sure played into all of it, man. So, fired up for the boy Baker Mayfield getting his $100 million deal. That's huge. That, that That's a big one, man. That's I mean, to me, that's the biggest... Like there's been bigger numbers that's that's been had throughout like before this free agency has started, but for Baker to get that kind of money mm-hmm. and throughout the process he's had to go to is the best. Russell Wilson met with the Steelers. I think he also tentatively is going to meet with the Giants as well. He he's with the Steelers, yeah. Yeah, yeah he signed. Gotcha. He stopped at the Giants, went to Pittsburgh. Here's what I'll say about we. I, I've kind of planted my flag in the ground how I feel about Russell Wilson. And how he hand, has handled himself. I'm not the biggest fan of how he's operated. If he goes to the Steelers, I think he finds success he used to have. You think so? I with uh, with Art? For I think because Arthur Smith, I think Arthur Smith is going to put him in a situation where it's not going to heavily rely on just him throwing the ball over and over again, kind of like the Broncos did. They're going to run the ball a whole lot more. Um, Art, I think Art does great with quarterbacks. I saw the way he was operating with uh, Tannehill and even Marcus before he got benched uh, in 2019. I think Art does a great job of quarterbacks and helping him. Because Russ does have the mind for it. What I think happened to Russ is, and I don't know Russ at all, but here's what I think happened to Russ. He had success very early. It got to his head. He started playing more into the, let me show you how hard I work. I look at how big of a celebrity I am. So yeah, all the endorsements and all that stuff. He has been humbled in a massive way. He has had the biggest, uh, was it dead cap from being cut? Like he's had the biggest cap hit for a team because they didn't want you anymore that any team could have possibly had. And so that is going to play into the factor of him being like, yeah, I have I have an act in a certain way that has gotten me away from the successes I used to have at Seattle. And I do know one guy that played on the Broncos with him. And towards the end of that first year, Russ brought them together, and he's like, I, he apologized for his attitude and how he went about it the wrong way. So I think there's been a lot of humility put in place for Russ. I think that with Arthur Smith, with a guy like Mike Tomlin, I feel like that's going to be any at Najee as well. They got weapons. I think that's a, I think that's a good place for Russell Wilson to go. Yeah. That's a good spot for Russell. Well, I mean, Wilson they to got go. him for basically league minimum 1.2. Yeah. For the uh, age he is. I mean, the Broncos are picking up the rest of the $39 million tab. Yeah. So Russ so very is, much like a low risk investment for the Steelers, low risk investment. It's a prove it deal from the sense that he's only getting paid 1.2, but he's also getting paid another 39. So right, but like, it ain't the Steelers, you know what I mean? Too. So he knows it's like a make or break year for him. Yeah, and even the the way the Steelers Steelers operate about it, it's not like they'll feel some pressure of right if he's the guy for the job. The or best not the ones guy are gonna play. Yeah, the best ones are gonna play. Yeah. So yeah, that, I think I think I think it's gonna work out in Pittsburgh. Um, Steeler fans can look forward to a lot of run game, a lot of play action, some QB keeps, some screens mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. just to get him going. Yeah, DeAndre Smith, a three-year, $24.5 million deal with 15.3 guaranteed going to the Chicago Bears. Swift is a stud. Yeah, I like Swift. He is a stud. Who else did the Bears get? I think they got somebody else throughout this process or re-signed somebody or something. 
Oh, okay. Because it feels like the Bears are really starting to get that. Uh, I mean, maybe they might have had this for a while. I haven't really followed the Bears a whole lot, but it seems like they're getting this franchise like you had with the Buffalo Bills back in the 2010s, where it's like you, that's where you go for your career to die. Yeah. The Browns before these last few years, that's where you go for your career to die. And it seems like there's like a little bit of a rumbling that maybe be, maybe it's changing this year. But we felt that way with the Browns, what, six years in a row when they were Super Bowl champions in April? Yeah. So we'll see what happens with the Bears, man. I'm not, I, I feel for guys like Big Cat who are sitting out there thinking, I think they'll be more competitive this year. They're just in a tough division. I, yeah. It kind of depends on if, if Kirk signs back with the Vikings, but let's just, in fantasy world, he does. Uh, you still got the Vikings. You got the Packers. The Packers are fucking coming. You yeah, also the Bears, got the, the Bears Lions. Are the fourth are the, the best division. In the division. The four, yeah. There are four in that division. Yeah. It's not close. Yeah. Right. They'll be a more competitive fourth in the division. Speaking of, Kirk, there was a, we saw a report when we were in Miami that they were talking about Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is huge. Which makes sense. Family. Yeah, his wife's family lives in a, lives in Atlanta, and I know in the off seasons Kirk would spend a lot of time in Atlanta anyway. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that would make a lot of sense. And Kirk's a stud too. I feel like he's one of those cats that has been paid. Ooh, what? All right. Breaking news: Tony Pollard signing with the Tennessee Titans. Oh no shit! Tony Pollard, Tennessee Titans, baby. That's big that's opening, big. That opening for big. Dallas and Derrick Henry. Hey, that's like a Baker Mayfield filling in for for Tom Brady. Now, Tony Pollard's got to come in after eight years at the King. That's that's gonna be big shoes to fill. Yeah, Guys yeah, are yeah. stud though, completely different ball player than than Derrick. The, the boys got to build that line of scrimmage. You they build that line of scrimmage. Build. Pollard's he, he can you know you need a complimentary back, kind of like a one two punch, but he's somebody who can come out of the backfield. Kind of make it happen, but who who's the uh, yeah Tajay Tajay Spears yeah Tajay Spears he's a beast too. I mean, he similar really styles. He had, he had like yeah. over a thousand all purpose yeah. yards his rookie year. That Tajay yeah. Spears kid. Yeah, similar styles, which is interesting because you kind of wish you had like a what was it Thunder and Lightning with uh CJ two K and his boy. Yeah, yeah, Glendale what Lendell well, White and in Dallas it was, you had Zeke and Pollard. You yeah, you can Pollard kind of the one too. Yeah, so that'll be interesting because they're both smaller backs that have like good catching capability, can run routes, get out in open space. Maybe just run more two back, right? Less tight ends. Yeah, or a lot, just a lot more eleven personnel. Yeah, I wonder though. You got to keep both those guys on the field because like how many weapons do you have? DeAndre, Traylon Burks. I still have more touchdowns than him. Um, yeah, and then and then uh, Nick Nick Westbrook Akine. Well, get, kinda, no, I'm sure they'll try and get it. They got to get somebody, but they've got so many issues in this free agency. They've got to go pick it, pick it off at the tackle out. They have to get a tackle if they're not going to do it in the draft. Now the draft has a lot of talent. There's that kid from Penn State. He's he's a stud, and then um, Joe Alt as well, who had to me. Uh, I don't know if his combine was was very good. You think he lost money at the combine? I don't think he lost. I don't think he gained though. I'll say that. And and we all know of kind of the conversations we've had in the past. The combine is really not. It's not what you see on the TV is kind of like a showman's thing. It's like okay, you get to watch them run, mm -hmm. get excited when dudes do well, and then boo when they do terrible. But as long as you're checking boxes, it, it is what it is. He had 27 reps on the bench. That's plenty. That's plenty strong. He ran a five two. That's your standard offensive lineman speed. That's what you're gonna get. But I thought his hips looked a little tight. Uh, but he's he seems like a kid that, that gets it. He's he's taller than me. Mm -hmm. He is like half an inch taller than me. He's a he's a big fucking boy. Is what he is. So we'll we'll see what happens there. They need to address the offensive line though. If the Tennessee Titans want to be yeah. good this year, they need to address the offensive line. But you need another weapon at wide receiver as well. Yeah, because they're going to be way different. The Tennessee Titans are going to be a high a high powered you know through the air type of offense now. Right, it's totally going to change. Completely Especially with Callahan there. I mean. Yeah, from the exactly. Bengals, you have all those. You had all that talent there. Which, mm -hmm. by the way, T. Higgins requesting a trade. There's your guy right there. Go get him. That's who you. That's who you want. Yeah, could potentially come here. I don't know. He's a what? He's the number two wide receiver at the Bengals. Looking you at give the, him a second at most, and definitely not a first. Looking at the Jerry, uh, Jerry Judy kind of uh, the article saying that uh, the Browns gave up. I believe a fifth and sixth rounder. Yeah, two different years, though. I think. I know both in twenty four. Is it twenty four? But the 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 writer followed up saying, with the way the wide receiver class is, it's fair. That's a that's a fairly good deal because it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of talent in uh, the wide receiver class this year. Yeah, maybe I don't I don't follow the wide receivers very much. Obviously, we know about Marvin Harrison Jr. There's a couple kids from the from Washington. Yeah. Yeah. Who's your boy Juice? Juice, Juice Wells. Oh, who's uh, who's your guy that we're disrespecting? Xavier Leggett, Steve Smith Senior, very high on him. 
that he's a better DK Metcalf. Ooh. Oh, what? He big like that? Yes, bro. Ran That's a, awesome. Ran a 4-4. So what is that? We just mentioned four guys, right? Marvin, the two dudes from Washington, I believe. they When Washington was playing Michigan in the national championship, there were like uh, those two wide receivers, and I'm forgetting their name, so forgive me. They were they were compared to like the the Ohio State class with uh, Chris Olave, and uh, who else was in that class? Garrett Wilson. Garrett Wilson. So they were kind of like those speed, really sharp routes, good go with their hands type of dude. So when you see those four or five guys that we just mentioned, I, I guess after that it kind of falls apart. Mm -hmm. But I kind of like the way the Rams did it, dude, where they kind of just said, "Fuck the draft. We're gonna get guys that already know what they're doing in the league, and we're gonna put a team together and." Essentially, max out our cap space and yeah. go win one. Yeah, that's what you, think, you, you think T Higgins commands a second round, a second rounder? No, no I don't think so either. Do you think you see all of like these older trades that have happened years ago, like what DeAndre? What was DeAndre? He was Hopkins. Like, yeah, he was like a third or fourth round pick. Yeah, uh, fourth though with David Johnson though, who was at the prime in his running back career. Yeah, but I mean, like, so I forget who it was years ago, uh, but like they only got. Like it was like Julio Jones or something. It was traded for like a third round pick. Yeah, he was in his thirteenth year in the NFL. Th no, that was both. That was this was like four or five years. Yeah. Ago. Oh. Like when he got traded from Atlanta. Yeah, to the to the Titans. Is that where he went? Right. Yeah. After? Yeah, I mean, if you're looked at as like a two or three in the wide receiver room, like you're not gonna get you're not gonna get a high. And if he came to the Titans, what, he would he I would think. go back to being a two, because you had DeAndre Hopkins. So and depending how they see Traylon Burks. T. Higgins could be seen more as like a slot guy, yeah? Yeah, maybe, but what do you get? Burks, he hasn't stayed healthy at all. Like, he's had a couple of games where you're like, okay, that's who we drafted. Yeah. You know, he was already coming in the eight ball, uh, behind the eight ball with, you know, being the guy that essentially replaced A.J. Brown. Mm -hmm. They traded A.J. to get him. So, yeah, but T. Higgins on the Titans would be awesome. Chris Jones, what year is Chris Jones? 11? Got a fat bag. I got the truck got 150 back, million back right the boy yeah what is it what? the whole contract breakdown over the next five years i didn't get paid shit this year well you probably got a uh Sonny yeah, Sonny Sonny yeah, oh, 30, yeah, yeah so there it is there it is <laughs> yeah, 30 million oh, i had the base salary like 1.25 like oh yeah. okay and 18 million of it's due by april 5th of this year <laughs> oh yeah good for chris man that is yeah See, one, two, then 13 the next year, 19, 28, and 35. I wonder if he'll see that, and then 27, 28. Because he's got how much guaranteed? Uh, 90? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure he'll, he'll be a cap casualty at some point. Yeah, I, I mean. 5.3 guaranteed. Yeah. 158 total. Up to 158. He got 95 guaranteed. That's insane. That's amazing. Shout out Chris Jones. That's he incredible. Did a great a smooth little job with the holdout. Didn't even play the whole season. Right. There's enough data to show. Any the deal he signed, he only too. missed one? He missed one game, but the deal he signed was like a million more dollars than what he would have got if he just stayed. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. He but was, there's enough data collected on what the defense looks like with Chris Jones and without Chris Jones. Like, yeah, he did. Good for yeah. him. Yeah. Good dude, too. Just like the other day, too, and just said KC dot, 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 dot. Just like super cryptic. Yeah. That's awesome. Chris Jones, if you're watching right now, we would love to have you on the bus, by the way. Yeah. I think he's committed. He's committed to the boys on the bus. Just got to get a time out of him. Yeah. Got to get him out to Nashville. No question. He can fly private to come see us. No problem. Yeah. That new money, especially right after April 5th, we'll hit him up. Yeah. Hey, April 6th. Yeah. When that check clears, go ahead and get you a plane down here, brother. We'll get you on. Uh, Pittman from the Colts, dude. What was it? I don't even know what his deal was, but he's been he's been balling for the Colts for a while. Kind of an underrated name of a guy, tall. Uh, I don't know if he's the fastest guy in the world, but great. He, me, like getting to a, the high point, finding the ball. The guy's a stud, absolute stud. So that's that's good for the Colts. What, what we got here with his numbers? Three years, seventy million dollar deal. <laughs> that's pretty big win. That's pretty good, and it's it's great to see players going to that three the three year type of deals. Like a few years ago, you see dudes signing those five, those six year deals. Right. The three years is, is, and with the money it's at is great, but it's essentially still a bet on yourself type of thing. Like in three years, I'm going to go get this bag again. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Think, which is very, uh, very years. the quicker you can get the free agency is the route to go. We right. Go, barring that you, you stay healthy. Yeah. That is the hardest thing to do. Another dude, Brandon Graham, he just signed a one year deal, but he's going into his 15th season with the Philadelphia Eagles. 
same yeah, team. Yeah, it's crazy. And man. in the same, well, I think 24 hour span, Fletcher Cox decided I'm done playing. Played 12 years with the core group of guys. Core man. breaking cool. news this is a crazy day. Packers just released David Bakhtiari. That one was kind of on the radar, yeah? Yeah. That was, that's been yeah, kind we, of talked we, about. We all, as a, a, we all understood casual. that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Where do you guys think he might end up? I mean, if he can stay healthy, he can go to Tennessee. He's already got a house out here. That would be a that big would win. That would be this a big is win. That's good. I know Dave, he was at the house the other day for that dinner we had. And you, you know, Dave is a guy that very reminds me a lot of Dennis Kelly, like very aware, very understanding, loves a good conversation. And you could tell in that process, he knew that this inevitable news is going to happen. But anytime you get cut, dude, even though when you know it's going to happen, there's a, there's a somber moment for you. Yeah. Sitting there being like, damn, it's really over. Cause he was at the, he was there for 10 years, right? The was Packers. He? I think he's a year older he's than me. A while, yeah. He's a long time. Yeah, ten years, and he he and I have very similar situations as far as like had a knee. Knee was you know not the best after the first surgery. Had to go back get some stuff cleaned out, stuff like that. And so this was definitely something we all knew was going to happen. But love the boy Bach, love him. Yeah, he gonna be he's gonna he gonna be all right. He's always gonna be all right. It'd be sick if the Titans grabbed him. That would be sick. Figure something out. It'd be big too. It'd be a huge help because you get a guy in free agency that you know can play ball. The only the only question mark on him is can you stay healthy? Yeah. Which is a, a scary question mark. But if he's able to play at eighty percent of his capabilities, the guy's a Pro Bowl guy. He's a, he's, he's you a get Pro that Bowl uh, right who, who man who was that linebacker from Carolina? We saw him in Vegas. Linebacker. Play next to Keekley. Thomas Davis tore his knee, same knee three times. Three times. Still came back Pro Bowler. That's Stud, impressive. Man. That is impressive. Should we? Uh, oh, oh, oh! Mac Jones. How, yeah. how you feel about Mac Jones going from the Patriots to the Jags? I thought it was a weird deal, and it's sad for Mac because he's going to be the backup at the Jags. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those. Yeah. Deals. I mean, he's not. Yeah, he's not Trevor Lawrence. No, he's not Trevor Lawrence. But Trevor Lawrence didn't have the greatest season last year, so I don't know if in the Jaguars camp they're sitting there going, "Hey, maybe if Trevor had a little rock, probably a little quarterback That'll conversation, but happen. it ain't going to be a real one." No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Yeah, it's not going to be a real one. So it's tough. I mean, it's Dave. Dave did a little, you know, video yesterday talking about Mac Jones. How you know it's not said and written yet if he's a bust or not. This is every bit of a bust that we're looking at right now. But you have the perfect example in the same conversation of Baker Mayfield, who until last year was an absolute bust. Now he's getting a hundred million dollar contract. Bro, come on. Who are you talking about? He's a first overall pick. He did. He did lead the Browns to the playoffs. He led the Browns to the playoffs. He's a first overall pick. First, first overall pick. If you're the first overall pick, you're a quarterback. Like you would think the guy, like the standard of a bust of being a top five pick is insane. Like you should be on that team for 10 years. Well, well, there's arguments. Browns kind of outed him too when they, when they let him go. Yeah. Parted ways with him. There are arguments. You could have arguments that Amari Cooper's a bust. Could you? Uh, No. I'm telling you. There's there. I'm saying, I'm not saying he is. I'm saying the argument. If you are, if you're that much of a talent, and you're at the Cowboys, <laughs> and you go to Cle- you go to the Cleveland Browns, get sent to the sent to the Browns, it's that you're getting traded. If if you were that great, your that team's gonna want to keep you. Yeah, but he had a great run with Dallas. He had a great run with Dallas, but how many years was he there for? There for like five or six years. Okay, six. Baker also had like four. <laughs> yeah, dude. Baker had four. And he did well coaches, with the Browns. He was a four top head, four pick, wasn't he? Four offensive. He was coordinators a fourth pick. Five years. Look up Amari Cooper. I'm not saying I'm I'm not saying he is a bust. I'm saying there's an argument for that. And I know that's a big like trigger word for everybody's bust and people are going to get mad about that. That there's an argument. There's All an right. argument to say I was a bust. I mean the last two the, the last no, two years a... Amari had over 1000 yards receiving. In his career it looks like he's had an 8 year or 9 year career, 9400 yards, 60 touchdowns. Stud. Is um who who's the who's the so, wide receiver? So he didn't get extended with the Raiders. It seems like he had some injury problems in that 2018, 2017, 18 right, season. He went to the Raiders first. So Raiders kind of like let him do his thing in free agency. Dallas signs him. He get they get a lot of they get a lot out of their investment at Dallas. Then he goes to the Browns and he's still over a thousand yards. Yeah. Is, who's um who's the kid? I know I'm not a bust. Who's the kid that has been like nine different teams but has a thousand yards every year? Brandon Cooks. That's the argument. 
is being on multiple teams when you're when you're a first round pick. I'm not saying Amari Cooper's a bust. I'm saying there's an argument for it because you're on multiple different teams. What is your standard of a bust? That's not that's not my standard. That's somebody like somebody else. When I was arguing, what you guys are arguing, he was saying, that, yeah, but if you're really that good, you're gonna be on the same team for, you know, longer. But the the thing is, like Raiders could have been in the running in free agency. Like some guys aren't tied to just being yeah. like, oh, I'm gonna stay with the same team. Like Raiders could have probably offered him a contract. I, I'm not sure. Was but... he? No, they would have picked up a fifth year option. He he got traded there just because they don't pick he up traded the, the Cowboys. Option. Yeah, well, this dude that You're was still willing to deal, like yeah. just because the fifth year doesn't. Get but Brandon up. Cooks, this guy is still saying the same thing. Like he he says a thousand a thousand yards a year, but he can't stick anywhere. I think he's been with the Texans for a few years now. Does he? Look that up. Contracts. Just, just uh, go up and just hit career earnings. And then zoom in. When was uh, Cooks drafted? 2014. What round? First. First. Who? For real? Yeah, I mean, and, and this, like him bouncing around, like he could be, you never know, but he could be like a, an attitude guy where he just doesn't stick. Like to me, if you're a first rounder and you're being productive and you're somebody a team can build around during that season, mm -hmm. then you're not you're, you're not like, a bust. Like to me, like if uh if Amari Cooper would have been a bust, a, a a real bust fizzles out after that down those uh down years or trending down years and uh his third and fourth season, That's like he wouldn't point. be bouncing back. The fact that he bounces back and he's still putting up great numbers for a receiver because the Dallas did love him, and then you just have. And a lot of people say Amari Cooper is like one of the best route runners that you'll find. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then they say he's not a bad locker room guy or nothing like that. Like sometimes the business is just the business. But I mean, he's been averaging over a thousand the last several years. Like, Coop, Coop's yeah, same like, way. That's a, like to me, he's, 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 I, I don't know what the word is of he's paying off. Yeah. He's got. 20, he made 17 million bonus in 2019. Yeah, with That's the with the Rams. Bonus. With the Rams. Oh uh, yeah. He got knocked out right in that game. Somebody didn't just no, take the was, top off. That was wasn't was he on the Patriots? Yeah. <laughs> Against the Eagles. That's right. No, that's see. This is a dude too. I think he's had a, a thousand yard year every year he's been in the league. Yeah. But he bounces around all over the place. Yeah, he could just be like an attitude guy. Who yeah. knows? I haven't really heard a whole lot about him as far as like uh, his reputation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, yeah, Cooper's definitely not a bust. That's a, That was a bad take. We will clip it, though. Yeah, clip it. <laughs> Absolutely clip it. <laughs>